Hey everybody, it's Ann Puckett here, uh, Regional Vice President with Arbonne with another training video for you and super excited about the topic for today because it is one of the most important skills that you need to develop in your Arbonne business and that is called building your list, your contact list. Sometimes we call it your warm market list or your lukewarm market list or your contact list. But effectively, this is a list of names, a list of people that you are gonna contact about products or business or both. And so what I'm gonna do right now is share my screen so we can get started. Okay, so here we go. All right, so we are having um, a training today on building your list and I put all these different people on the front screen because I want you to be in the mindset right away of that this is exactly what we do in Arbonne is this is a people accumulating business, <laughs> a people gathering business. That's what we do. We just accumulate people everywhere we go and we sort them into categories of business partner, customer, host, um, referral, all sorts of things. And why do we do this? Okay, we build a list because your list is your currency in Arbonne. You really don't have a business if you don't have a list. You're always wanting to be adding new names. If you're brand new to the business, of course, you're going to start with a list. It's one of the first things we do. But whether you've been in Arbonne for 10 minutes or 10 years, we're always working from a list. The list is ever-changing, ever-growing. That's the goal. So as I said, we're a people-adding business. We need to get good at adding people. And the way we begin is by starting with the people that are closest to us. So the way we do this, we usually teach this in a getting started appointment, but I'm going to go over it right now for everybody too. So you've probably seen this little graphic at the bottom with the green circles, and here's what we do. We start first by putting our own name in the middle and then drawing the eight circles out away from our own name, and these are eight categories of different contacts that you have in your life. This is somewhat customizable to you. It somewhat depends on you and the different activities that you go through and the different sort of people that you know. But we all kind of have some categories that are pretty much the same for everybody. So we start with family and with friends. Often neighbors are a great source of people that we know. Our, um, our job or a former job are also places your spouse or partner is a great source of um, their family, their friends, their job. Your kids, you may even have different categories for different kids because each kid has their own network of friends and their parents and you know the teams that they're on and their classes and that sort of stuff. You also have hobbies. You maybe you go to the gym. Maybe you're in a book club. Maybe you um, you know go to an aerobics class. Maybe you are you know a member of a um, one of those like football teams or something like that. So whatever hobbies you have where you come in contact with other people, that's a category for you. Also, if you are a member of any religious institution or affiliation and you have people that you know through that, you're going to want to put that down too. So you think of the eight categories of people and then you're going to start jotting down about four or five names per category. Um, the first ones that pop into your head, the first couple of ones that jump into your mind and just get started writing those down. And you wanna jot them down quickly. This is kinda of like a brainstorming activity, and when you do brainstorming for ideas, you're not judging whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, or whether you're actually gonna do that thing, you're just writing them down. And when you're making your contact list, it's the same kind of thing, so don't hesitate. If your name pops into your head, write it down. Don't prejudge so you don't wanna assume, oh, well, you know, he has a great job, so he wouldn't be interested, or, she already uses such and such a kind of product, so I'm not gonna put her down, or he's too busy, or you know, she doesn't like this kind of thing, or any of those kinds of um, ways that we sometimes effectively stop ourselves from writing a name down on the list. Don't do any of that, don't allow that. You just wanna get the names down on your paper, because honestly, it's not up to you to make a decision for somebody else. It's not your job to spend other people's money. It's not your job to spend other people's time. It's not your job to say yes or no for somebody else. Once they have the information, that's their job. And you just never know what someone's gonna say until you invite them, until you ask. You wanna make sure you put men and women. We have products and a business opportunity for anybody. And also folks that are near and far. It doesn't matter where they live as long as they're in the United States, Canada, Australia, the UK, or Poland, or as long as they know people in those places, 
then they can go on your list. All right, so once you've gotten your um, categories and your names down, then you might want to kind of get organized and write them in a list form where you can put their name and their phone numbers and you're not looking at this crazy thing with circles forever. You're going to go to Laura Harry's website, which is lauraharrynation.com, and you're going to go to the prospecting tab and click on the warm market list and you can download it. It looks just like the one in the picture here on the slide. And then you're going to want to write down the names and the phone numbers of the people you already have so far. Keep your list with you all the time. Take it everywhere. Take it to work. Take it to the store. Take it to the carpool line. Take it everywhere because as you go through your normal course of your day, you are going to come in contact with people and then you can add their name um, or something about them as you think of them instead of thinking, oh yeah, I've got to remember to do that later. You probably won't remember to do that later. We're just too busy. If you don't know their name, that's okay. Just write a description. It might be something like, you know, the um, redheaded girl at Starbucks with the um, heart tattoo on her arm or something. Something that you know, I know her, I've seen her before or him, but I don't know their name. Just put something down because that will jog your memory that you need to get to know their name. It's okay if you don't know their phone number too. Just put their name down. At another time, you can get their phone number through a Facebook message or reaching out to somebody else who knows that person. You'll get the number, but the most important thing is to put the name down. All right, once you've started with the people that you know the best, that's about usually about 35 to 45 people that you know pretty well that you come in contact with on a regular basis or people that you um, have known in your life well. But you don't want to stop there because there are so many other people that we know. So your cell phone, if you pick up your phone, you probably have about 100 or so at least names in your phone and phone numbers. Go through and put everybody on your list. Um, Facebook friends, and when you look at how many friends you have on Facebook, it's probably hundreds of people. So uh, go through that and start writing names down. You can put them in categories or just make a list. It doesn't matter. You can also look um, at a neighborhood list. A lot of times neighborhoods have a directory or a, a, some sort of list or an HOA directory or something like that. That's a source to find some more names of people you might have forgotten about. Take a walk around your neighborhood. Um, a physical walk is another good way. Think about um, lists for things that your kids are involved in. Ballet, soccer, gymnastics lacrosse, karate, whatever it is. They take lessons in something, piano, violin, anything, some sort of sports team. There's usually a list or a roster for that team or for that class. So that's another place where you think, oh yeah, right, Emily's mom, I forgot about her. It'll be another place for you to, to come up with some more names. Your class list for your kids, if they're school aged or preschool aged, there's usually a directory of uh, all the kids in the class and their parents. Uh, if your kids are in daycare, if you have a, um, a religious institution that you're a member of, then there's usually a directory for that. Many of us are members of Facebook groups, like a neighborhood Facebook group or a club of some kind. You can look within that group and see the names of everybody that, that is also a member of that group. If you got married any time in the last like five or so years, even more than that, you want to go back and see if you can locate the list your invitations list because that's a great source for names that you might have forgotten and if you've sent out any sort of invitations or um, holiday cards or announcements or something go find that list because that's another um, another way to come up with some more that you might have forgotten so there are so many places you can look in your in your life in your computer in your phone um, in your kitchen drawer to find more names to put on your list okay there's also a lukewarm list. These are vendors, the people that you do business with. And so there's all different kinds of, um, of folks that you do business with on a regular basis, whether it's the pharmacist or the person who sold you your house, the person who does your taxes, the person who does your nails. If you go see a, a person regularly, you get massages or something, or a physical therapist, or somebody who cleans your house, or they cut your hair. Just start thinking about people that you see when you go out and about and living your life. Maybe you have a contractor you've used a couple of different times, or this is by no means a complete list. This is just the start, and you have to think about your own life and, and what fits in there. These are just some memory joggers for you. All right, another way to come up with some more folks is to think about people in terms of their personality or their characteristics. So you can start thinking, okay, who do I know that is super successful. Like they're just good at everything. You know, they whatever it is that they do, they're good at it. 
Um, who do I know that's really ambitious or competitive? You know, they're always trying to win. Um, those are great people for you to think about as prospects for your list. Um, who's got a really nice house, really nice car, they take nice vacations, they have a nice wardrobe, um, or they own a business. Who are those people that whenever you need someone to volunteer for something, they're always saying, I'll do it, I'll take care of it. Um, maybe on a committee that you've might have been on or a volunteer kind of thing. Who's like super extroverted, life of the party, you know, they just always seem to have lots and lots of friends. Um, let's see, what else? Who's um, really a helpful, caring person who just, you know, loves to help other people? Who's a leader in their job or career or in other organizations, PTA, something like that? These are just some places to get started where you think about, okay, yeah, these are the kinds of people that are really good prospects for your business. So you want to think about adding those names too. Okay, so now what? Now what are you going to do? All right, so now you're going to use these names as um, your working list, your working capital, that's going to fill up your calendar. This is what we do. We add people into our business as customers, as hosts, as preferred clients, as consultants, as business builders, as business partners. So you're gonna to wanna to book some take a look appointments where you sit down with somebody and show them the business. You might put together a basket of some products for them to sample. We call it a pamper basket. That might be something you might wanna reach out to somebody and invite them to do. A one-on-one -on -one appointment about products. They can book parties for you, um, either long distance ones where you can zoom in or local ones where you can go to their home. You might wanna invite them to a grand opening event at your home or a grand reopening event in your home. You wanna have multiple of those usually so people can choose between a couple different dates. You could invite them to a Discover Arbon. Um, we have these recorded calls or we also have uh, live Zoom events where we have them live and in the flesh in person too. So whatever it is, um, once you have your list, then that's the next step to take. It doesn't really do um, much for your business just to have the list. It's when you use it <laughs> to fill up your calendar. That's what we call scheduling. And scheduling in our business is what leads to sales and sponsoring. And this is the name of the game. And the great thing is that as you reach out to the people on your contact list, those people know people. Everybody has their own network, and your friends and family, coworkers, neighbors, whoever, can provide you access into their warm market. And this is how you can have a, um, a business that sustains itself for decades. You can always continue to meet new people by being introduced to them through others that you already know. So it's time to get busy booking your calendar filled with lots and lots of appointments. So I want to say thank you for, um, for logging on and watching today's training. Good luck to all of you as you um, start to build your contact list and fill up your calendar with appointments. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody.